Hey guys, you ever wonder how you see some of the real hardcore bodybuilders in the gym and they've got these really big biceps? You're wondering, how are they doing it? I'm doing the same exercises they're doing. How come their arms are so big and, and, and your arms aren't? Well, I'm going to tell you the secrets that I use to develop massive biceps. So let's take this into the gym. We're going to start out with the basic compound movement, barbell curls. It's live or die. You need these in order to build big arms. You can't build big arms without doing the basic barbell curl. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So follow me in. All right, first exercise, barbell curls. A lot of people butcher the shit out of this exercise, and that's the reason they don't have big biceps or massive arms. Call it what you want. I'm going to show you the right form how to do this exercise and how to engage your bicep muscles in order to build the massive arms that everyone wants so desperately, okay? Demonstration purposes, I'm gonna grab a 20 pound barbell. I'm gonna let the bar come all the way down. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they're starting here and they're doing a rocking motion, never getting the full extension of the bicep. We're gonna start with the bar straight down, arms are straight down, there's no bend in the arm. My shoulders are pulled back. And before I start the first repetition, I'm tensing my biceps and I'm curling and squeezing at the top, and I'm keeping constant tension on the bicep for every repetition, okay? You pick a weight that you can handle, try to get that 20 to 25 rep range. There are days where I go heavier. I might start out with 75 pounds and get maybe the 12 to 15 rep range. I'm always changing it up, okay? I'm also a high repetition guy. I like to keep my reps above 15. I'm not an eight to 10 guy. So, when I do barbell curls, like I said, some workouts I'll go a little heavier. Other workouts, I go lighter and I get the higher repetition. It's all about setting the pace for the pump because when you're two or three exercises down the row into your workout, you're gonna have too much gas expended. You're not gonna be able to chase that pump like you did on your first exercise. That's why it's so vitally important to pick the right weight when you're starting and set the par high. Get them high reps, get that muscle engagement and squeeze the shit out of them biceps. The next exercise I would do is gonna be a seated preacher curl. They have standing preacher curls. They got machine preacher curls. I'm gonna do a seated barbell preacher curl. I'm gonna show you the form that I use. This can be a very dangerous exercise if you're training too heavy. You can tear your bicep. You do not want to bounce this weight. You do not want to use excessive weight that you can't control it because a bicep tear will sideline you. And let me tell you, it is no fun watching someone tear the bicep. I've seen it happen many, many times and it is ugly looking. It's ugly looking. So follow me to the preacher bench and we'll get started. All right guys, the next exercise I do, again, another compound movement to build big arms or big biceps is the preacher curl. And I do this in every workout. It's not necessarily in the same order that you're gonna see me demonstrating because I like to change the order up of my exercises. I showed you barbell, we're going to preacher, the next one's gonna be dumbbells. Well, I could start on preacher and go to barbell and end up on dumbbells, or I could start on dumbbells and go to preacher and end up on barbell. It doesn't matter, they're all correct. It depends on what you wanna do that day. Well, demonstration purposes, we're doing barbell, preacher, and then dumbbell. When you do the preacher curl, you have to make sure that you are in control of the weight and that the weight is not controlling you. Like I said a few minutes ago, you don't wanna blow your bicep out. You do not wanna get a bicep tear. And this is the easiest exercise where if you ego train, train very heavy on it, you can tear your biceps. So, err on the side to caution. I grab the bar. My bar is about it's almost kind of like shoulder width to where my hands are on the bar. I'm hanging over the bench and I'm lowering the bar all the way to here, totally extending the bicep, curling up and squeezing, just like this. Don't do this. This is, this is not right. You want to come all the way down, squeeze up, all the way down, squeeze up. You could also do this with a cambered bar, which is going to work the outside of the bicep. You know, today's workout, I'm doing the straight bar. I love straight bar. Going down and I'm coming up. My biceps are engaged from the very start of the repetitions. I'm squeezing every repetition. I'm not going fast, but I have my routine controlled. 
I'm controlling the movement. I'm not using any momentum to bounce this weight up. Every repetition is controlled. Now you can do barbell curls on a drop set. Come here and do a high rep set or a drop set or do a high rep set of barbells and come here and do a drop set. Every one of those scenarios is correct. You just figure out what you're gonna do that day. You pick it out. Like I said, I'm always changing it up. I don't do the same thing over and over because that's where you get your stagnant periods or your plateaus. You know, I'm doing all the right stuff, but I, I just don't see any growth. I don't see anything because you're doing the same thing every workout and nothing's changing. Change is good and you have to be willing to accept change and it's gonna take your training and your muscle growth to the next level, okay? We're gonna take this over to the dumbbell curls. So I'm gonna show you three movements today, three basic compound movements for biceps. There's a dozen others, but I'm gonna show you the three basic that I always incorporate in my workouts. So let's take this over to the dumbbell rack. All right. Last exercise is gonna be dumbbell curls. You can drop set this, you can high rep set this. It all depends on what you wanna do that day. Today I'm gonna to grab a couple of 10 pounders and I'm gonna show you my form for dumbbell curls. And again, this is another exercise that people just butcher the shit out of. They put a lot of momentum into the movement and that's so wrong, so wrong. I'm sitting on the bench, you can do these standing also. And all I'm doing is rotating my wrist outward before the bend in the elbow even starts, I'm rotating outward, I'm coming up, I'm squeezing, I'm going down. And I concentrate on every repetition, one arm at a time. That's what works best for me. Is two arms wrong? No, I just don't feel comfortable doing it two arms at a time. I do one arm at a time and I can squeeze each bicep individually. I'm twisting my wrist to the outside just ever so slightly to help with the bicep peak and I'm squeezing the repetitions and all of my repetitions are controlled there's no momentum in my body no swinging to bring these repetitions up they're all controlled repetitions okay if you were going to drop set this you might want to start at the 15s. Hell, it might even be the 20s. Everyone's different. It depends on what kind of pump you're bringing to the exercise. It depends on how much energy you've expended at the previous two exercises. So you pick your weight accordingly. The demonstration, they just did the 10. In my regular workout, I would start out with the 15s and rep them to failure, then go to the 10s and rep them to failure, and go to the 5s and rep them to failure. I'd have each set of dumbbells in front of me. And then I was, when I'm done, I'd go back to barbell. Or I may work out backwards and go back to preacher and then the barbell. Doesn't matter the order you did it. It's what matters is that you're doing it and you're doing it right. I am constantly changing my routines up, constantly keeping my muscles on alert that nothing is going to be the same any workout that I do. This even applies with my clients. I train them the same way and they're getting fabulous results. So I got training videos out, championship muscle training videos. I put a lot of time and effort into this. My 43 years of knowledge to my coach back in the day, Bob Bruskin, and I cover all the body parts. Every body part's covered. It goes chest and shoulders, back and bys, leg, forearms, tricep, calf, reversing diabetes with the keto diet, that dramatic weight loss everyone wants. Well, this is the lifestyle and how you're supposed to eat. And I go through it in great detail. And the competition preparation for those competitors from off season, on season, stage ready, all in these videos. If you join my Buy Me a Coffee shop for a monthly membership, you're going to get 25% off. The videos are very large files. I put a lot of time into these videos. They're no joke. They're no bullshit. And everyone that's purchased them, I'm getting the feedback that they absolutely love them. I'm all about teaching. I'm all about educating everything that my coach taught me back in the day. I'm not about this bullshit you see on social media, all this nonsense on YouTube. Look at me, look at me. This is the way you train. It's the way I was taught and I was a champion back in the day, okay? Until next time, thank you for uh, subscribing. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys back in the gym. Peace out.